Hi, so the only difference between this version and the version that we finished off with in the last video is I've put on some wheels and I've painted it green. Now I have done one other thing. Somebody mentioned that they thought that this uh, forks column here, the steering column, was a bit weak only having one fillet piece on there. Now I can be a little bit stubborn and I think my reply was don't worry about it, it's fine. But it obviously preyed on my mind all night because what I've done is created this box section and put in an extra support here so this is nice and supported twice. So I'm figuring it should be strong enough. So thanks for that comment. And even sometimes we get back to you and I'm not very uh, receptive to it. I assure you, I do mull it over. I do think about it. And really, if they're good comments, I try to incorporate them. So that's what I've done. Now, I really like the wreck of the forks. Maybe we're adding extra stress we don't need to. I, I don't really care, to be honest. I just like the wreck. We're going to find out if it actually lasts when we get it running. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, I guess I'll have to do something else with it. But then it's my build, my thing, and I can do what I like. And I like that wreck. One of the things that encourages me about the wreck of that is uh, I think that's uh, the same kind of wreck that choppers have. But I did take the wreck from the original machine, actually. I measured the angle off the vertical and took it from that. So I'm not 100% sure if that wreck of the forks is going to be good or bad, but I'm certainly going to give it a go and see. Now, <coughs> I obviously love overbuilding things. It, it kind of screams Victorian engineering to me. And when I painted this green and got the wheels on, I mean, I, I was just knocked out by about how steampunk stroke diesel punk it actually was. And of course, that's exactly what we're going to do with it now, because it's really telling you that, which is probably why I painted it racing green, to be honest. It's saying to me steampunk. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever watched that 1960s time machine film. And the actual time machine that he travels in has elements that I want to pluck out and use on this to give that steampunk feel. So I really like certain bits and pieces of that design. So obviously we need something to stand on. And what I've got actually is this rather large cutting board. It's obviously very dirty, but we'll clean it up and oil it. And that'll be the thing that you stand on because you don't sit on this, you stand on it. Obviously, we've got um, a set of handlebars. Now, I'm using a donor moped. The moped actually was in a fire, so it's completely burnt out. So a lot of this stuff was ruined, and I've had to spend a fair bit of time cleaning it up. But I'm okay with that. I don't mind cleaning stuff. Then most of it is the kind of steel bits and pieces that didn't warp or didn't get ruined anyway. So I'm using bits of a burnt out moped to do this, and that actually goes on there, like that. Now, when I look at that, I figure I'm going to be standing on this and my hands are going to be about that level. So I don't think that needs any extension to it. I mean, we'll see. I won't actually fix it until it's down on the ground and I can stand on it and we'll see. Another thing that I got from the moped was a kickstand. So I'm going to weld the kickstand onto this side here so that the thing can actually lean over instead of falling over. Um, so it'll have a nice lean and I'll weld the kickstand on. So bits and pieces of this have been donated by the moped. Bits and pieces, obviously, I have built from scratch. The frame we scratch built in the last video. And there are going to be other bits that I really use. So one thing I thought I might do is put some uh, gold pinstripe on the green, because that'll look really cool. And the other thing I thought I would do is I've got this. This is a uh, print drum from a printer. And what I liked about it, actually, was this design here. So this design and the circle really nodded at the time machine to me. It made me think of the time machine. So I figure I'll mount that somewhere round about there and we'll put a display panel in there indicating speed, state of charge, that kind of thing. And fasten it onto the actual bike using these things. These are Munson rings. They're just really great brass and ornamentation. And we'll fasten it onto there and take the Munson rings to the frame and fasten those to the frame. So obviously I built everything here. I can weld extra lugs and brackets on if I need to, or I can drill it out if I need to. So the plan is to mount this as the control portion just about here. And somewhere to put the ignition key as well, really. And if anything else hits me, then I'm probably going to use it. Now we do need, I think, some kind of um, mud guard for front and back. Not 100% sure what to use for that. I'd like to use copper, actually, but I'm still not 100% sure. So we'll have to come up with something for the mud guards, really. But I thought I would, what I would discuss with you was the general theme of the design. Because we started really just by uh, getting a wrecked moped and having that motor and thinking, hey, we're going to build a, a kickstar scooter. I mean, yes, as I said, a kick scooter on steroids for sure, but a kick scooter. 
Uh, and when it turned out so chunky and racing green, that's what made me think steampunk. And obviously I love steampunk. Now, this thing actually has, I think it's a 500 watt motor. It might be a 250, I'll have to check it. But it's quite a powerful motor. So even though this thing is relatively heavy, we should get sort of 18, 20 kilometers an hour out of it, which is a little cracked really when you think what it is. But obviously what I've done is I've fitted some um, disc brakes here actually. And I have a caliper set, a couple of these actually. A couple of caliper sets to bolt onto the disc brakes. Uh, and these are a, a lovely red color. So we've got red, black, green, gold. That's really sort of like um, steam engine engineering as far as I'm concerned. So a lot of this is going to be bolting stuff on uh, in, in the parts where it needs to be bolted. So there won't be that many updates, okay? When it's interesting, that is when it's something I'm doing that's a bit different, then I'll, I'll talk about it. So we'll probably go through the adaptations to that how that's fixed. And when we come to fitting up the electrics, we'll probably do something on the electrics as well, so that you can see how the battery and the uh, controller and the display are all connected up to each other. But something like wiring on the, uh, sorry, bolting on the brakes and making the addition, a change to this, where I'm just gonna chop it off and saw it and um, file it down, isn't probably something I'm going to video. So anyway, I thought I'd keep you up to date with where we are and tell you where we're going with it. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video and we're building a kick scooter on steroids steampunk style. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the series.